Beast World Walla Rising issue 1 heads to Gotham City where an ambulance is being shot at by Black Mask assassins as Archie, the EMT inside, tries to stabilize the man in the back. The ambulance is crashed into by the pursuers, making Sarah wonder where the heroes are. Archie knows that the world is ending so they are a bit busy as he gets back to work trying to save the man on the gurney when Amanda Waller contacts him, calling him Deadeye. She tells him that he is needed and he is to report to the coordinates that she has sent him since she needs some jobs done quick and quietly. Archie tells his auntie that he is busy and needs to get out of his head while he works. Waller tells him that it's urgent and she wouldn't contact him this way if it wasn't, but Archie doesn't care, shutting her out. Before she leaves, Waller tells him that millions will die if he doesn't help her now, making the EMT wonder why she needs him if she has countless resources. Waller reveals that he is the resource and trusts him to do the right thing. Archie figures this is about Beast Boy, but Waller says that it's adjacent to that, as an agent of hers has stolen something from her and fled to a city near Tanasha in the Democratic Republic of Congo. She reveals that this agent is Dr. Hate, making Archie drop what he is doing, telling Sarah that the patient he's been working on will be fine, but it won't matter if the Black Mask assassins catch up to them. He tells the woman that it's been an honor to work with her, wanting her to get the man to the ER while he deals with the assassins following them. Archie activates his belt buckle and transforms into Deadeye, the psychic tracker. As he deals with the criminals, he learns from Muller that Dr. Hate has taken a Phantom Zone projector. In the Phantom Zone, Val Zod carries the damaged red tornado through the wasteland. Val asks how Lois is holding up, but the cyborg says that she should be able to get them out of the zone with her quantum tunnel tech. However, she needs to run diagnostics on her systems since Ultraman's attack took her functioning down to 28%. Val knows that she is skirting the question, but Lois tells the Superman that she doesn't know what to say, since he's been carrying her for weeks and they left John alone with Ultraman who almost killed her, so she's definitely not okay. Val thinks it's okay to not be okay and John will be fine and they are getting out of there, promising the woman as much. Dr. Hate appears, telling Val that he isn't there to save them, but acquire him sensing his great power even from within the Phantom Zone, and he is the key to Dr. Hate's kingdom. Val agrees to go with the villain, but wants to get Lois to safety first, but Hate reminds him that this is an abduction, not a rescue, sending out his magical pets to grab Val and pull him into a portal, leaving Red Tornado behind as Fate says that he has no use for an android and his spell requires flesh and blood. In the Red Sea, Black Manta and Gallus the Goat wait for their contact. Manta doesn't think this feels right since they did just steal a bomb from Amanda Waller and this could be a setup. Dr. Hate appears, saying no matter the universe, one can always count on a Manta. Black Manta wants to get their deal over with, showing the bomb to Hate, who tells the villain that he needs it since magic has its limits, hoping that Manta made the modifications he requested. Manta reveals that they did and integrated one of Beast Boy's spores into the bomb, wondering what will happen when it goes off. Hate says that chaos will reign, but Manta is only really interested in in his money and when he's going to get it. Dr. Hate betrays Manta of course, sending his pets out to grab and take Manta and his crew, telling him to say hello to Superman. Manta's men are all taken by the monsters as the villain fights them off, stabbing his trident at Dr. Hate, who recoils in fear as the weapon is made from Ori Chalcum, a metal that weakens magic users. Angered, Hate blasts Black Manta, turning him into something more useful to him. Deadeye meanwhile tries to locate Dr. Hate, learning from Walla that he is a prime level threat. Archie thinks they should loot the heroes back into this and ask the Titans for help, but Walla sees them as nothing more than sidekicks, wanting to get Hate back as the creature plans on using a bomb to make a sacrifice to the Lords of Chaos. Deadeye asks why he went rogue, learning that when Hate attacked Beast Boy, he got a little taste of pure chaos, and now he wants more. Walla refuses to reveal what Hate was doing for her, but Archie wants to know since he is stepping into this blind. Waller will only say that Hate is safer under her control and he's using life forces of powerful metahumans and humans to breach into the fabled dimension called the Kingdom, and it's there he plans on twisting the souls of the dimension's inhabitants and turn them into mindless beasts that will drag souls back to the dimension for him to use in his rituals. Deadeye asks about the rock Waller gave him, learning that it's some Ori Chalam ore that will help amplify his psychic tracking 
psychic powers and once inside the kingdom he is to set off a psychic explosion and block hate from the kingdom for good. Deadeye asks what happens if he fails, learning that the world is doomed so he better hurry as the spore threat is escalating across the world as well. Waller wishes him good luck as Dr. Hate calls for the Lords of Chaos, asking them to lend him the power of the red to seek out more humans and metas. Dr. Hate's demons gather him Nubia, Dr. Mist and Freedom Beast as the villain tells the Lords that together with the power of all of the vessels, the kingdom will fall and the fear and chaos and hate will reign supreme. At the Batwing HQ in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Batwing tells Vixen that she didn't have to come all this way since he can deal with Black Manta on his own. Vixen is very well aware of that, but this land is her home, so she's going to help David out. David fills her in on the underworld chatter of a bomb being in the country and Black Manta is involved somehow. Vixen thinks they should alert Arthur or Jackson, the Aquaman, as Batwing's void shield activates, stopping one of Dr. Hate's monsters from attacking them. David asks if Mary can communicate with the animal and find out where it came from, but Vixen's powers only tell her the creature isn't from this world, but it knows where Black Manta is. David suits up and Batwing and Vixen head to the Red Sea, finding all of Manta's men have been taken. Batwing gets readings of chaos energy on the beach, and Vixen asks if David knows any magic users he can call in for help, but the hero reveals he doesn't really trust magic or have any friends. Vixen decides to make some calls of her own, and they are going to have a get together tomorrow so David can actually meet and meet other people for once. Vixen spots Manta's helmet, thinking that he might have been killed, but Batwing finds signs of Beast Boy's spores in the area, making the heroes wonder how the spores and dark magic are even connected. Manta, injured but alive, pulls himself out of the surf, telling the heroes that the spores and the magic are the least of their worries. Manta manages to take Vixen hostage, telling her to let Batwing know that they are taking his jet and leaving. Vixen can tell Manta is grievously injured and he has a fractured lung and before Manta can answer, Vixen elbows him hard in the chest, breaking his already cracked ribs. Batwing demands that Manta tell them what happened, but all Manta will say is when he catches his breath, he's going to kill the heroes and take their jet. Vixen separates Batwing and Manta, telling the villain that his men were attacked and if he talks, they can actually help them. Manta relents, wanting a medkit from the jet, and then they will talk. Later, after being fixed up, Vixen learns that he tried to sell a mega bomb to Dr. Hate, but Manta thinks that he's just another in a long line of zealots, although when he was attacked, he got a glimpse of the kingdom. Vixen implores the men that they can't let Hate reach the kingdom, as inside the dimension, Superman meets Gallus the Goat telling her that more of them will arrive soon and they need to stick together. Val asks if she knows why they are being brought there, but the woman only knows that Dr. Hate told them that her and her crew will be fuel for the bomb she was trying to sell. Gallus reveals that she is actually a pirate supervillain, much to Superman's shock, but he doesn't think that it matters in this place. Superman notices that he's not at full power thanks to the magic and the world around them dying, making him wonder what the bomb is for then if the place is already dying. Deadeye Mimo makes it to Tanasha, finding loads of spores from the Titans battle. Waller tells him to disregard them and find Dr. Hates, so Archie tells Waller that he knows he's already on his tail as something is sucking the life out of the area. Waller is happy to be working with her nephew again, telling him that the door is always open for him to come back and work with her and and the family again, but Archie tells her that he would rather eat broken glass, and once they stop this monster, he's done with her for good. Deadeye finds a shimmer in the air, discovering it's some type of energy. He steps through the energy and finds that his life force is being sucked away by the Tower of Hate, just like what happened to the plants around the area. Suddenly Dr. Hate attacks him, sensing Waller's psychic stench on the man. Deadeye fires his gun at the villain, but his creatures still drag Archie into the kingdom. He finds that he can't contact Waller while in this realm as a small fiery bird passes over him. The bird suddenly turns into a giant monster, attacking the agent, but Superman blasts it apart. Val asks if the man is okay, but Nubia knows that he is and they need to hurry and help the others who are arriving, since Amazons attack, they don't just sit around to be rescued like damsels in distress. Superman hopes that Deadeye has news from the outside that could help, as Manta becomes frustrated with Batwing, telling him that he only got a glimpse of the kingdom, so he has no idea what exactly it is. Vixen luckily knows all about the kingdom thanks to the stories 
her grandmother would tell her, telling the men that it's a place where the parliaments of the universes can converge in harmony, and Beast Boy is connected to them like she was connected to the Red. Vixen figures that Dr. Hate wants to destroy the kingdom, and while it's normally impossible to get into the place, Dr. Hate's assault has weakened the walls enough so she could concentrate hard enough and maybe even sneak into the place. Before Batwing can stop her to consider the variables, Vixen is transported into the kingdom. Manta knows that she's fine on her own, and in the meantime, they should go and try and find Dr. Hate and feed him his helmet. In the kingdom, Deadeye tells the gathered metahumans all about the dimension, refusing to elaborate on how he knows all about it though. The other metahumans agree that this dimension is special, and destroying it would be like cutting off a piece of the fabric of reality. Soon Vixen arrives in the dimension, and Deadeye is quick to tell her who he is and how he can amplify her power with his own, to help get Black Manta's people out of there. Mary thinks that that's the best news she's heard all day, but some of the monsters arrive, attacking the heroes. Nubia knows that these are creatures of the kingdom who have been transformed and corrupted, and they need not fight them. Vixen agrees and tells them to draw strength from the kingdom itself and overpower Dr. Hate's magic of the place. The heroes do so, drawing power from the kingdom and turning the monsters into dust. Deadeye uses his powers to back up Vixen's, allowing her to teleport all of the heroes away. She wonders why Deadeye has stayed behind and the agent tells her that he needs to sever the connection to reality or Dr. Hate will just start the process all over again. He understands the roles of the red and green and how important they are, but Vixen thinks that Walla just wants control over the kingdom, and he's going to give it to her, as she reveals that she saw Batwing's files on the Deadeye agents, knowing that he is one of them. She leaves Deadeye with a choice, as Dr. Hate, meanwhile, is attacked by Superman and the other metahumans, and the surprise attack defeats the villain. Manta plunges his trident into Hate's helmet, crippling him but the villain still manages to escape, saying that he left a mark of chaos on Manta and he was going to unleash him later in the game, however by attacking him now he has forced his hand. Black Manta is suddenly overcome by one of the Beast Boy spores as Dr. Hate's presence returns to the kingdom. Vixen tells Deadeye to block it out and use his deep connection to the kingdom to overpower the villain like they did the monsters before. Deadeye unleashes his power on Hate, taking him out of action as the other metas try and save Black Manta from the spore. Superman tries to rip the parasite off, but it crawls onto the hero, prompting Batwing to tell him not to let it latch onto him, and to use his connection to the kingdom to separate it. Superman focuses on the kingdom and rips the parasite in half, destroying it for good. Superman asks how Manta is, but the villain is only interested in his men and if they are okay, and if they aren't, they are to be compensated for what happened. Deadeye and Vixen return from the kingdom, assuring the heroes that the kingdom is okay, as Walla Meemol imprisoned Dr. Hate, who screams that she will die by his hand. Walla reminds him of the deal they had, and he can only cause chaos when she sees fit. Walla leaves to take a call from Deadeye, who demands to know why she sent him to blow up a sentient paradise. Walla reminds him that he still did save people, and this is a game they must win, as the world relies on unchecked wild metas and aliens, but she is planning on taming them all, and Deadeye must now choose a side to fight on. Later in Ethiopia, Deadeye tells Vixen that Walla is up to something and is involved in this Titans incident. Vixen knows what Walla's been up to, as does the team, and they have all decided to stick together and keep an eye on Walla and the kingdom. Deadeye asks about Superman, learning that he's working at getting his Lois out of the Phantom Zone, but Val also wants to stay and help. Vixen offers Deadeye a place on the team, but he doesn't think he's a Justice League type of guy. But Vixen and Batwing tell him this won't be a Justice League, it will be a new beginning to a new network.